Hi, my name is Keith Cooper of North Light Images and in this video I'm going to look at the question of what printer detail settings should you choose for a printer such as this. This is the Epson ET8500. This also corresponds to the Epson ET8550, the bigger version that takes A3 Plus prints. Since internally they're essentially the same, you could use the same ICC profiles on each. So what goes for this printer goes for the 8550 and vice versa. Anyway, a bit about what I'm actually looking at here. When you print on the printer, you have a choice of printer quality settings. Now for the driver on the Mac here, it's pretty simple. You've got two quality, you've got, well, you've got draft as well, but I'm going to assume that you, if you're going to use draft, you know why you're using draft. But you've got two quality settings, quality and high quality. What's the difference between them? Well, the obvious difference is print time. It takes longer to print at high quality. The not quite so obvious difference is that the way that's done is that the printer, when it's printing at the quality setting, it prints bidirectionally. So it prints with the print head going this way, then it goes back that it prints going that way as well. And the paper advances through, so it's faster. The high quality setting prints unidirectionally. So it prints as the head goes across this direction across the paper, then it goes back and paper's advanced and then it prints again. So obviously that takes longer. Um, there are other considerations as well as to what is what it's actually doing, but effectively the high quality takes longer. Is it worth it? Well, the test I'm doing, and I've got this test for quite a few other printers I've looked at, including the big Epson P5000 here, um, Canon Pro 200, Pan Canon Pro 300, Epson P700, P900, which also are two identical printers from a, point, from a print point of view. So 700 is the same as the 900 from profiling point of view and print quality settings. They have generally far more print quality settings available than this one does. Um, and I've got sort of big piles of prints for this. Now, test image I'm using. It's a shot in the Yorkshire Dales, lovely area of the country if you visit in the UK. Um, limestone topography here, uh, cast, typical cast topography. Um, there's a dry river valley here. Anyway, this is a shot when I was just out one day looking across the valley. Uh, there are some sheep, there are lots of sheep in the Yorkshire Dales. There's some dry stone walls, there are some rocks in the distance and some, yeah, yeah that is typical Yorkshire Dales look about it. And and there's lots of detail in that. Now I took that shot, uh, if I recall, with a 50 megapixel Canon 5DS. So there's lots of detail. How much of that detail do you need to send to the printer to get good quality image? Do you need to send all of it? Well, there's been for many years, there's been an assumption that with printers it, it, that there were certain magic numbers of resolution. So if you wanted the best resolution for an Epson printer, it was to send the image at 360 pixels per inch. Now, as I say pixels per inch, that's the image resolution, not dots per inch, which is the printer resolution of the little ink dots that it's putting out that you may see in some areas, but it's pixels per inch or PPI. This image itself, it's a big file, certainly when it's printed at this size, means that I've got a source image with lots of detail in it. Now that allows me to print that at various pixels per inch settings and see whether there's ever actually any difference. Now, I can't show you all the details on a video of the precise shots. There is a link to the written version of this in the notes to the video. And if you want to check the images, go to the written version to actually see the images. You can click on them, you can enlarge them and, and, and have a look at them much easier. But there's the whole scene. This is detail from that scene. Now, um, at this size, the sheep that I'm looking at in here, no, they're cows. There are sheep close up, there's cows in the fields over there. The cows I'm looking at over here are just dots at this distance. On these pictures here, they are barely visible little dots. Now I say this just so you don't over interpret what I'm saying here about print detail. So there's the whole image. This is the detail that I'm going to be photographing. Now, once I've printed out this at the different settings, 
I used my Canon 5DS here with a macro lens on it to take a very high resolution image where you can actually see the ink dots. Now, even if I take a very high magnification lens and use this as a loop to look at it, I can only just see the ink dots. So we're talking about stuff that you may want to consider whether it's even worth bothering about. But these are real differences. First of all, difference between high quality and quality. Well, the high quality easily walks it. Uh, the, high, the quicker system shows a slight banding in dots of ink. Now, I thought maybe I haven't got the printer set up properly because there are alignment processes, which you don't, should always do on your printers. I thought maybe I've not got this set up properly. I ran the alignment process again. It uses up quite a few sheets of plain paper. You can't do the alignment process, I notice, on, a, on the actual photo paper you want to use. And there are lots of test patterns. Now, these are fiddly to do. Um, I, I appreciate that they're there, but I wish Epson could come up with a better way of doing it because there's quite a lot of uncertainty. Now, if I'm looking at these, and I've done this loads of times, and I'm uncertain which target to pick as the best, I'm sure other people will be as well. So that's an area which I think Epson and, and Canon as well could improve. Now, on the big printers, they have sensors which do this, and, the auto, and, and it's an automated process, but not on smaller printers like this. So that's an alignment. Suffice to say, the alignment made no difference. It's a feature of it. Now, look at the actual pictures I've taken in the written review. I'll put some, obviously I'll show some here on the video, but you're not gonna see them in terribly good detail. But you can see that high quality walks it every time um, at very fine detail. At the level of looking at pictures here, with these glasses on, I can't really see any difference. If I put my re strongest reading glasses on, even then I might not be able to see much difference. But it is a real difference for very fine detail. Okay, so I've decided, use the high quality setting unless I'm in a hurry. What about all these different print resolutions? Because there was, and I say, it, it went back for years. People said, oh, there are optimal print resolutions you should send to the printer. So Epson printers, it should be 360 pixels per inch or multiples of that. Canon printers, it was 300 or multiples of 300. Uh, some newer Epson printers do have 300 now rather than 360. It's just to do with the print head design. Does that matter? Now, I've tested this, as I said, on lots of other printers, and my conclusion was, no, it does not matter at all. There are no magic numbers of resolution to send to the printer to get better results. I started off, I've got a range here of the pictures. They go from 360, then I did 500, then 720, I doubled, uh, and then 1440. What did I find? In general, the more resolution you sent to the printer, the more resolution appeared in the print, up to 720. 720 to 1440 made no difference, and in fact may even be slightly worse. So the upshot of that is, if you are printing an image and your file has a natural resolution at the size you want to print it of, let's say, 474 pixels per inch, send it at 474. Don't reduce it to 300 for printing or anything like that. What about if your image, if you're doing larger prints than this, and your natural resolution comes out at about 270? Well, it depends a bit on how large the print you're doing, because larger prints tend to be viewed from further away. Um, small prints like this, people look at quite closely. So the Minimum resolution needed for small prints, because you look, people look at them closer, is higher than it is for large prints. Um, and I've always said, if anyone, if you print, do a print, big print like this, and anyone walks up to it and shoves the nose in it that close to look at detail in it, they're never going to buy a print. Now, only other photographers do that, and they don't matter. Um, it's about what it looks like to you or the people you're doing the prints for. Um, so I've got my detail settings. I will send whatever resolution I've got. 
If I've got a low resolution image of say 250, I've done large prints at 250. For smaller prints, if it came out, if it was not a very big file, so it was an old image, I might resize it using some of the modern resizing software like Gigapixel AI, which is superb. I've got lots of stuff about using that for doing resizing. But for the basic settings, send as much detail as you've got to the printer. Um, that does it. Um, even the 1440 print, which is, doesn't show much difference, this, this is f at 1440, there are details in this that start to show when you send. They don't really show at sending 360 to the printer. At 500 they show a bit. At 720 you can start to see them. But put this all in context. These cows at the back here, which I can clearly see in this image as our cows, as opposed to here where they might as well be sheep or something white in the distance. Um, that's a, at that size, I can't see any difference. At this size, I certainly can't see any difference. If you're unsure of whether this is really applicable to you, um, just take a piece of paper, do a print at two different resolutions and look for yourself. Actually testing stuff like this always trumps what you might read on forums about people's suggestions of that. Um, I've seen too many people over the years intimidated on photography forums by so-called experts saying, yes, you absolutely must do this. This is the best way of doing it. No. Um, do some prints. Have a look for yourself. Decide for yourself. Trust what you see. Um, you know, it's quite likely that these people quoting what you should do have never actually tried this. They're just quoting something that they heard mentioned years ago and are carrying on with it. Photography is like that, unfortunately. Um, various myths and things persist. But so hopefully that's of interest. Um, there may be slightly different settings on the PC version, a PC driver. I don't have any PCs around here. But here on the Mac, I've just got quality and high quality. So I just use that. If you're interested in this for other printers, I'll put us some links in the notes to some of the other articles that look at different printers for this and um, make some nice prints. And remember that nobody really looks at them at that close. It's about what the pitch is about. So thanks for watching. I hope that's been helpful. Please do subscribe to the channel and as ever, ask questions because that's what gives me ideas for these. Thank you.